Do you love operation sessions but hate doing the paperwork for them? Well, I'm hoping to change your mind this week. So in last week's video, I showed you an Arduino sketch that read RFID tags. In this video, what I'm gonna look at doing is sending that RFID, RFID data from the Arduino to a Google Sheet so you can make your own automated switch list. Follow this tutorial step by step. The process does look a little bit daunting, but if you have followed this tutorial step by step, so you're gonna achieve some awesome results. If you haven't watched my video setting up the Arduino RFID tag reader, um, it might pay to check that one out first. In this tutorial, we build on the process with that sketch from the last video. Some time ago, I did a video on barcoding. So each one of my car cards and industries on my layout has got a barcode. So it's a very cheap barcode where I scan it. And that also populates across to uh, an Excel or a Google Sheet. So we, we're gonna also integrate that in future videos as well. I'll put all the links in the description below. So enough of the waffle, let's head over to the desktop and we'll get started. So what, what, what we're going to do, we're quickly going to just do a quick recap of video one. So I'm not going to go through this whole sketch again, just, just show you what, what we're achieving. And if you do like what you see, you can obviously go and watch that first video first. It shows you how to do this and then come over to this video and we'll, we'll go from there and I'll show you how to get it over on the Google Sheet. So in short, what we're doing, we'll go over to the inset now. We've got RFID tags. Oops, let's just bring up the serial monitor. So this RFID reader, which is just here, is going to be my Belair Yard Departure West location. And you can see up there, we've got the K KPEV S9, which is a locomotive, and the brake car. So that's pretty well, in, in essence, what we're trying to achieve here. Um, now we're going to bring that data across onto a Google Sheet. Okay, so what we need to do now, we firstly need to create a Google Sheet. So where all this data is going to go. So I've got one up on the screen there. It's a very, very simple sheet. The sky's the limit regarding how you want to make these look. So the first thing you need to do is, obviously we've got the Google Sheet. If you don't know how to do that, to get into Google Sheets, there's various ways off, off your Google interface here go blank spreadsheet and you just go from there. So what we then need to do is we can name it. As you see, I've got RFID to Google Sheets version one. There's different versions I've been working with here. So the first thing we need to do, each time you do a different sheet, it's got this unique identification number here. So what you need to do is go and copy that up between the the forward slash there and the forward slash there don't include those so then we need to go over to extensions we need to do an app script because this is where and I'll put this in the description below we now need to copy a, a JavaScript across so what this this part this little JavaScript is doing it's it's handling the incoming data from the Python script as I said, sounds in the beginning all very complicated, but we're only changing a few different things here. Um, I didn't write any of this. This is just what I found online, how you do it. So as you can see, I'll go down the bottom here. And that's not what I wanted to do. Let's quickly go and grab our data again there. our sheet ID and you can see that sheet ID there on line 21 replicates exactly the sheet there so when you get this all it will say in capital is your underscore sheet underscore ID so your sheet ID so this is the sheet identification number we just need to put that in there make sure you keep all these parentheses here because um, that's very important employment and then we go up to this de deploy button 
So you would go to new deployment, go web app, you name it, go and send it off and then go and deploy. But And this is exact, basically exactly the same as what I'm going to be doing here, but I've got various ones running here. So I just need to go and deploy. And don't worry about any of this here. Um, that is if you want to do some, some fault finding, but um, all being good, this should be good to go. We now need to go to the next part, is where we write the Python script. So this is the direct link between what's happening on the Arduino side of things to the computer across to the Google Sheet. So as I said, I didn't write any of this. This is all what I found on the internet. So there's only a very few things we need to actually go and change. So I'll bring up plenty of videos on Python. So this is Python running on mine. So um, I will put in the link below where you get to this. It's just a matter of copying and pasting the code. Now, what I do here is I use a, a thing called Notepad++. So here's the code here. So the code we're actually after is where we need to get this bit here from. So this is the this is the script ID. So what we've just done, I should have said to, to copy this, so I'll just quickly go back in. So where the script ID is, sits in, in this section here. So deployment ID is your script. So you need to go and copy that. And we can cancel that because I don't need that anymore. We can X out of that. We can go back into plus plus. All right. So I'll just put that down the bottom there. Now you can see that that script ID there is exactly the same as that one there. So that's that's what we do. So that's the only thing we need to change. Now the only other thing, sorry, the only other thing we might need to change is what COM port your Arduino is coming in on. So mine is currently coming on COM port 15. And if you don't know how to do that, you just quickly go over to your device managers, go to ports, com, and LPT. And I know normally the other the other communication protocols on COM port one. If I was to unplug my my Arduino Uno, I know that that would disappear. So we're on COM port 15. And it's just a matter of dragging, dropping all of that all the parentheses this up until the import data so we copy it we go into python and it'll do its thing push enter again and then enter again you can now you can see it's received data so what we'll quickly do before we go across to all right before we go across to showing some some footage of scanning the tags and it coming up onto the screen here we might just go across to my Sponsor PCBWay.com. PCBWay PCB offers a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining, and a variety of materials. If you do not have the correct tools for the job, you can quickly upload your Gerber file for a PCB and press enter and get a quote in no time at all. Then select your material, finish, and other post-processing customization like PCB assembly, where all the components are added. If you are new to PCBs, their professional review team will review your file and notify you once they are good to be manufactured. This makes PCB Way a good option for your projects. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. So as you can see up on the screen here, I've got the Python. I've had a bit of a play around with it and it sort of shows. I'll show you a few of these in real time what they actually look like. So as you can see there, what it's done is it's received data from the brake car. One, two, three. It's got its unique tag number. It said it, it's saying it's sending to Google Sheets what it is and the data has been sent, sent successfully. And as you can see here, it comes up exactly how you want it to do now it's up to you how you want to format these um, I'm probably just going to use the actual card data so you can do what you want you can get rid of that that column if you want or chain go in and change the sketch if that's what you wish to do so I'll just quickly show you that we'll scan another All right, as you can see I've just scanned the locomotive
and also a box car that's come up on the sheet there also. So you don't have to have this Python up and running. You can literally just go through and scan scan the, the tags. So as you can see, the RFID data has been logged within the Google Sheet in reasonably real time. So you can imagine a train's going over the sensor, coming out of a staging facility somewhere, and it's populating this data so you know what wagons you've got. So as I said, I can see this being reasonably useful, extremely useful. Um, also, you could probably use this similar to in inventory management, where you could scan an RFID reader over it um, and keep track of that. And also, if you're in a club, attendance tracking and, and so much more. So where I'm going to use it, of a few years ago, I did a video on barcoding. Um, so all of my locomotives and my wagons all have car cards um, and a little car card folder so to speak that the operator will carry around with them that holds um, in the case of a of a wagon carry a waybill so each on the back of those has got unique barcodes so I can then bring up my switch list which I'll bring up very shortly which is in, a, in as an Excel document I can then scan that which is pretty well bringing this same data in so this is where I'll just bear with me I'll tell you where I'm, I'll be going with this is then I look at the the, the waybill data where that particular wagon needs to be routed to and then I can go into and scan where it's going to and what industry and what commodity it is and then send it across to the printer and I print out switch list that way for my um, from my operators so where I can see this being quite useful is my trains coming out of staging the type the end the, so the locomotive and the type of wagons that are being pulled by it will be will populate across to the Google sheet itself and then I'll get the waybills and I'll scan the other data into it send it to the printer and print it out so um, that's what I can see happening in in the near future for me so if you want to have a look at that video that I did some time ago I will link that in the description below so like all my videos I have three questions so question number one um, is this the sort of system that you might look at doing? Um, as I said, it does look reasonably convoluted, but once you sort of get your head around what you need to do, it's actually quite easy. There's only a few parameters you need to change. Number two, if you are using something very similar to this, I know Dr. Jeffrey Bunzer has done, done something very similar, not barcodes, but he's using QR codes. So I'm going to look at, into that, how that might work too. That looks pretty exciting. Um, so make sure you put in the comments below which, which way you might go with this. I'm just really interested in how people are, want to populate out their, their operations data or documents, I should say. And number three, if there's any glaring errors here or better ways or better script that I could write could be written to do what I want to do that might make this process go just a little bit quicker please comment below i'm always interested in in that so that's the end of the video so if you found this video helpful please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and give that bell a little hit for, uh, to be notified of upcoming content so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time